Well, good evening, church family, and those of you in our community or wherever you may be joining us tonight. We're thrilled to have you join us for uh, this time we call Midweek Manna, a chance to pause in the middle of the week and have a chance to reflect on God's Word together. And we hope and trust your week is going well uh, to this point. Everyone had a great Fourth of July holiday weekend and was able to stay safe through it and it's having a good week to uh, this point. If you're like us in the Troy area, a lot of rain this week and I know perhaps more this week. So hope everybody, everybody is doing well and staying as safe and dry as possible uh, during this week. Several weeks ago, I mentioned having to kind of clean out my office, and the reason for doing so was getting some new flooring in in, in my office here at, at the church building. And the flooring got put in actually when I was out of town for a few days, but had some folks send a picture of it or two, that, and I could tell it looked nice, but really when we got back, uh, I was able to see it with my own eyes for the first time, and it really was striking just how nice it was, how new it looked, in some ways how pure it was. And thankfully, for the most part, it does still like that. But as I got back and we looked closer at it, and our secretary here looked closer at it with me as well, she happened to catch and notice that there were actually a couple of scratches on the floor. And then sure enough, that as I needed to do some more rearranging of furniture for different reasons as we were having to do some more work on it and it's, it's laminate flooring. And so what happens, of course, is we're moving some of the furniture around as we look and there was indeed marks on the floor where we had to move it around. And it's so aggravating, it's so frustrating because it does look so new and looks so nice that you know there's still things that's messing it up. My wife recently cleaned out her vehicle and vacuumed out her vehicle and she was gone for a few days and, and got back and she got into the car and she was in the driver's side and she's like, who put all this grass in the vehicle? And I had to sheeplessly admit that it was probably me because I was the one getting in and out from the ball field or from different places and probably having grass on the shoes that caused that. And of course, it was aggravating for her because she had spent so much time and work in getting to get things clean, and yet there was still, when she got back, noticing it was dirty again. Well, we all can relate to that in so many different ways. We, we go through that frustration. We wash dishes, only indeed to dirty dishes up and have more dishes to have to clean. We wash clothes, only to have more clothes, clothes pile up and have to wash clothes Again, we get something new and think we're going to keep it fresh, we're going to keep it new, but also understand that when we use it, it's going to get used and things are going to happen. There are going to be marks, there's going to get dirt that comes in whenever it gets used. You can't keep it looking perfectly straight and clean all the time. The only way to do that is simply to not use it. We understand that is not possible. Well, I guess it's possible you cannot use it, but really what good thing you're going to get out of it if you don't use it. Well, I say all that to bring up a passage in 1 John chapter 1. It's a very familiar passage, but there are parts of this passage that we look at and sometimes overlook some other parts of the passage. But beginning in, in verse 5, John writes, This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Well, it's a very, very interesting passage in so many different ways. It's John talks about and almost seems to contradict himself in some ways. He's writing this to people that are Christians already. He's writing this to folks that are part of a church. And he's saying, that first of all, that if we say we have fellowship with him, we must make sure we don't walk in darkness. So if we walk in darkness we get claim fellowship with him that we are 
then, then we are lying, we're not practicing the truth in his words there. And so he says in one sense, hey, don't say you are part of the fellowship, don't say you're part of a church. We would say, don't say you're part of a Christian, but yet go and live the way of the world, go and live in the darkness of the world, or really living any way you want to without any regard to striving to be holy. But yet he also comes back and says later on, verse 8, we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. See, John seems to acknowledge here that even when we are walking in the light, even when we are striving to be holy, even when we have been cleansed of our sins in our life, when we've given our life to God, we've given our life to Jesus, when we've been buried with Christ in baptism, and we are a cleansed person, we are a forgiven person, we are pure, yet we also recognize and know that we are still, as he says, really by nature, sinful people. If we say we don't sin, then we make God out to be a liar, who says all have sin. And the reality is, I'm convinced that even for the apostles, even for Paul, even for all those we talk about in the early church, as we read about the history of the early church and them becoming Christians and all the great and wonderful things they did, sometimes I think we get an idea that Paul and Peter and even John himself and others just didn't sin, and I think that would be inaccurate. We have to recognize that even after Acts 2, even after the early church began, even as they were teaching about Jesus Christ and writing these letters and talking about holiness, I'm not saying they went and sinned intentionally, but I think we would be mistaken to think they never made mistakes. We actually know from uh, the book of Galatians about Peter and Paul and Paul thinking Peter made a mistake and at least from Paul's vantage point and Paul's viewpoint we can understand why we can see it that way as Paul accused Peter of really behaving one way when Jew Christians from a Jewish background weren't around but when they came around actually behaving and saying things a different way and at least from Paul's vantage point it does seem like Peter was doing things that would be considered a mistake and not quite right. So I say all this to say that for us as, as Christians, that even when we have been cleansed and we are striving to keep things new, and again, we don't intentionally go and sin. It's not like we wake up in, in the morning and look in the mirror and say, oh, today I'm going to go and do this sin. I'm going to go and do that sin. We, that's not the case. But we also recognize just as we go through life, as we allow ourselves to be used, if you will, whether it's at work or at recreation or even at church sometimes or even at home, we recognize we make mistakes. We get scratches on the floor, if you will. And so John recognizes that. And that's why he says such a beautiful way in verse 7, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. My good friend Randall Myers, his campus minister here for a number of years, he's the first I remember hearing say this, but he kind of called this verse the windshield wiper verse. That the beauty of what John is saying is, is that if we are walking in the light, when we do go and have sin, it's almost like we have rain fall on the windshield as we're dealing with this week and the windshield wiper comes and clears off that rain so we'll be able to see. But yet also acknowledging that even once the windshield wiper works, if it's still raining, obviously rain's still gonna come. So the windshield wiper has to go back to help clear the, the windshield off again to help us to see. And if we're walking in the light, that's really what the blood of Jesus does for us. It does cleanse us from sin. We, we go and we sin and the windshield wiper cleanses off that sin. But the next day or even later that day we sin again and the windshield wiper comes and cleanses that off as well. John does say in verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's an aspect about confessing. We talk so much about confessing Jesus as Lord and that's important to do and we do that and we do give our life to him but we also need to remember and understand that confession is a vital part of our Christian life, period. Confessing our sins to God, as we read about, and need to do often and not on a daily basis. Sometimes that means, as James talks about, confessing our sins to one another. More times than not, it's in a 
private way, but there are times in which we do so in a public way. But John does reassure us here that when we do confess our sins, as we are walking in the light, we recognize our imperfections, we recognize our mistakes, we recognize the times we get grass in that truck and our vehicle has just been cleaned out, or we get a scratch in that brand new car, or we get a scratch in our brand new flooring. And we can be thankful that we have a God and we have his son Jesus, the seal is willing through his blood to forgive us. John goes on to say in chapter two, my little children, I am writing these things to you so you may not sin, but if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is a perpetuation for our sins, not, only, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. John goes on to say, by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. See, as we strive to keep his commandments, we, we make that our goal, we make that our priority, but also know a recognition that we're not going to do that perfectly. And no one other than Jesus has ever done that perfectly. And knowing that just like our sins are cleansed at the moment we put on Christ in baptism and commit our life to him and enter that covenant relationship with him, that even as we walk hopefully in the light and walk in the light, we still have our sins cleansed. That's why even over the weekend, as we talked about the freedoms we have in Christ Jesus, and you heard, I'm sure, saw so many people talk about being free in Christ and the freedoms we have in Christ. What exactly does that mean? Well, there's a lot to be said about our freedom in Christ, but one of the biggest things that means is we are free from the bondage of sin. We're free to live. We're also free from that guilt of sin. I'm not saying that we don't feel guilty when we make mistakes, but we are free in knowing that we are cleansed and forgiven of our sins as we confess our sins to God and to Jesus. And His blood does purify us. And so we can go on and continue living without being dragged down by that bondage of sin. You know, as we notice the spots on the floor, someone brought in some cleaner, uh, some something for us so we can get and wipe on the floor and basically help those scratches going away. And for the most part, it worked. I know where they are, so I may look closely at them and still see them at least faded, but most people come in when I ever notice that they're there. And that's kind of the way it is for us Christian life. We know our mistakes, we remember in many ways our, our mistakes, but hopefully remember them to learn from them. We don't remember them to be dragged down by guilt because we know, just like the cleaner did on my flooring, the blood of Jesus does and the desire to wipe our sins away. And for that, we can be thankful. Well, just some thoughts for us tonight, reminders for us tonight here in the middle of this week. And again, we hope and trust your week is going well to this point. We do hope everybody uh, remains safe during this time and, and then during these rains and during these storms. And remember our, our neighbors and friends, tropical storm comes through this week. We're mindful of them and all the rain they're dealing with. Please remember them. Uh, we continue to remember those families of the, dealing with the condo tragedy in, in South Florida. Continue to watch and remember them, and I know we all will continue to do that. We do want to encourage and invite everybody. First of all, we want to encourage everybody to mark your calendars for our Vacation Bible School. It's coming up not this Sunday, but it begins a week from Sunday. It'll be July 18th through 21st. It'll begin at 6 p.m. each of those nights. We have classes for all ages. We encourage you and invite you to come and, and join us for that, and we'd love to see you here. We also, of course, invite you to our our time of Bible class and worship that we'll have this Sunday. We have Bible class at 9 a.m. We have our worship at, at 10 a.m. We will assemble here at the building. And for those who uh, prefer, just for safety reasons, we understand we are streaming our worship in our fellowship room here at 10 a.m. And for those of you that leave it best still to, to worship from home during this time, uh, we are recording our worship here at 10 a.m. and posting that just as soon as possible. And usually the later than noon or so is for, is ready through our YouTube channel. We encourage you to join us that way as well. 
Again, thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you, the rest of your week goes great. We hope you can join us through one mode or the other coming this Sunday. Let's close tonight in prayer. Father, we thank you for who you are. We, we, we thank you for the fact that you do love us. We thank you for knowing that we are free in Christ. We are free from the bondage of sin. We are free from the guilt of sin. And knowing that even as we are in that covenant relationship, we acknowledge, we recognize, we don't walk in the light perfectly, that we are simple people still, that we make mistakes, not in a way of being so intentionally, but in a way of just recognizing the fact that as we go through life and we deal with frustrations, we deal with ups and downs, we say things we shouldn't say, we do things we shouldn't do. Sometimes we don't say or don't do things that we should do, and we confess that to you. We thank you for your forgiveness of those things, and for your blood of Jesus that does forgive us of our sins. We're so thankful for that. And help us indeed to always strive to walk in the light, to know you, to strive to keep your commands. Father, tonight we are mindful of those that are dealing with the storms right now. We pray that you watch over them. We we'll continue to be mindful of those families and the terrible tragedy down in South Florida. We pray that you'll strengthen them, bring them comfort and peace in a way that only you can. Father, we're mindful of people that are still struggling right now with COVID. We know it's not going away. We pray for those that are dealing with it in a physical way. We pray for those that are dealing with it emotionally, perhaps as well. We pray for those that are dealing with family members as well, dealing with it. And not just with COVID, but other illnesses as well that we know so many, that so many dealing with. We pray for you to be with them, to strengthen them, help them to know and your presence is with them to strengthen them as they go through these times. We pray for those who are dealing with loss of loved ones. We know several is through our church family and friends that are dealing with, with that and we pray that you'll comfort them in a special way. Father, we continue to lift those first responders, those in the front lines, those in the medical profession as we continue to battle this COVID virus. We pray that you will give them wisdom and strengthen them during this time. And we pray for them really in general at all times. We pray for our military as well. Pray to watch over them. And Father, we do pray for the leaders in our government, both in the local level and the state, national and world level. We lift those to you. We pray you watch over them and bless them with wisdom. And Father, we particularly pray that you'll look to you for guidance and for wisdom and that you'll grant them wisdom that they will make decisions that will help us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and have opportunities to share the good news of your Son with those around us. Again, we are thankful for that good news. Again, we're thankful for the forgiveness that's found through his blood. We pray all this in your Son's name. Amen.